Rolls-Royce is known for making arguably the most opulent and exclusive cars in the world. The manufacturer is currently part of a BMW group, but hasn't always been this way. It's fair to say it hasn't been plain sailing for Rolls, changing hands plenty of times, including a stint when the government owned the company. This is a story of Rolls-Royce's ownership from the formation in 1906 to now. Rolls-Royce can be traced back to 1884 when Henry Royce started an electrical business called F.H. Royce & Company, later renamed Royce Limited. The first car made by either of the founders was the Royce 10, a two-cylinder car in 1904. He met co-founder Charles Rolls later that year. Rolls was the owner of one of the first dealerships in Britain, C.S. Rolls & Co. in Fulham, which sold and imported European cars. Rolls was impressed by the car and agreed to buy all of them. They were all badged as Rolls Royces and were sold exclusively by Charles Royce. Rolls Royce was officially formed on the 15th of March 1906 and the search for a new factory began immediately. More capital was needed to fund the expansion, so in December of that year, £100,000 of shares were offered to the public. In 1907, Rolls Royce bought out Charles Royce's dealership. The Nightingale Road factory was built in Derby, with production beginning there in early 1908. The Marble Hall followed in 1912, providing offices for the factory. During World War I, Rolls-Royce began manufacturing engines for aircraft. The Eagle was the first engine produced by the company and production commenced in 1915. 1921 saw the opening of a new factory in Springfield, Massachusetts. This was to help ease the three-year waiting list for the Silver Ghosts and Phantoms. Ten years later, Rolls-Royce bought Bentley, a rival for luxury car brand. Bentley was stuck in a tough period due to the Great Depression and the new owners decided to stop production of the 8 litre and dispose of Bentley assets. Bentley would sell badge engineered cars which were mechanically identical to Rolls Royce's. Rolls Royce would build a shadow factory by the government and crew in 1938 to produce aeroplane engines which were the main focus during the second world war. After the war, car production would move there and it is still Bentley's headquarters. Further changes were made. In 1939, the manufacturer bought the coach builder, Park Ward, and H.J. Milliner was acquired in 1959. The two were merged. Rolls-Royce also began producing diesel engines in 1951, which were also used in railways and industrial machines. Sentinel and Thomas Hill were bought to aid the production of these engines. Bristol Siddeley was also bought to bolster the aero side of the business. However, this was the side that led to the demise of the first company. Development of the RB211 engine caused serious financial problems that took the company into receivership in 1971. It was liquidated in October. Rolls-Royce Motors Limited was found on the 25th of April 1971, not long after the first company went into receivership. Production of all things cars began again. In June of that year, all assets from the previous motor business were acquired. The motoring side of the business was then sold to Rolls-Royce Motor Holdings Limited in May 1973 ahead of its IPO. However, this was disappointing to say the least. More than 80% of the stocks issued didn't sell and ended up being owned by the underwriters. In August 1980, Rolls-Royce merged with Vickers, an engineering firm who had been involved in all sorts throughout the 20th century. Despite it being a merger at first, Vickers owned and ran the company, selling the Rolls-Royce engine division in 1984 to Perkins Engines. Vickers then sold the manufacturer to the massive Volkswagen Group who paid $430 million for Rolls-Royce and Bentley, outbidding BMW by $90 million. BMW now owns the Crew Factory, Spirit of Ecstasy trademark and the iconic Grill trademark. However, there is one rather large problem. The company producing the aeroplane engines, Rolls-Royce PLC, still owned the name and logo meaning Volkswagen was unable to build cars under this name. BMW licensed the naming rights for just £40 million, a snip considering the price VW paid, which excluded perhaps the most important part of any company, the branding. BMW had the upper hand by far, being able to pull the plug on supplying engines with a year's notice, too little time for VW to find a way to put their engines in Rolls Royces. A deal was struck, allowing Volkswagen to use the name and logo until the end of 2002, with BMW still supplying engines. From the first day of 2003 onwards, however, BMW would be the only company producing cars under the Rolls-Royce name, and their German rivals would continue to build Bentleys. VW claimed they only wanted Bentley as it sold double the number of cars Rolls-Royce did, but it must have been a bitter blow for the German Titan. There was a survey in 1987 found that Rolls-Royce was the second most well-known brand, with only Coca-Cola being more recognisable. While Volkswagen was still producing rollers, BMW got busy. First, the HQ and factory were set up on the legendary Goodwood Estate. Development of the first Rolls-Royce under the new company, named Rolls-Royce Motor Cars, the Phantom, also began during the period of waiting. In terms of the BMW has been in charge of Rolls-Royce ever since, instating the British brand as a pinnacle of luxury cars. 
while simultaneously helping them mark adapt to the modern world. The Cullinan has been a big success and is by far the Rolls Royce that you're most likely to see, at least on UK roads at the moment. The electric Spectre has no doubt been helped by BMW's EV expertise as the German brand has been one of the fastest movers towards electric cars. The sales figures tell the story particularly well. Less than 800 cars were sold by Rolls Royce in 2005 but a record 6032 were delivered to customers in 2023. Sales have picked up massively in Asia and the Middle East in particular, helping the brand to go truly global. BMW has to be praised for its ability to grow sales year on year without removing any of the special feeling around such a prestigious brand. There we have it, that's the story of Rolls Royce's ownership, from a merger between two car loving British businessmen to a complete collapse and state ownership, a battle between two dominant forces in the Safe to say, BMW has brought the best out of the British. Safe to say, BMW has brought the best out of the British mark after a rough few decades. Put the brand back at the top of the luxury car world where it belongs.